Hello guys, this is Juha Maluba, Weightlifting Sports TV and welcome. Today we have one of the best Olympic weightlifting coaches, Webster Lukose, who has participated in different capacities as a coach. He has participated in the Commonwealth Games as an athlete. And this is one of the best person that I look to in this country. Please introduce yourself, Webster, to our audience as we start. Hey guys, this is Webster Lukose, uh, founder and uh, coach at Uzani Weightlifting and uh, former national team athlete and uh, nowadays just uh, an amateur athlete. Joshua Lunga amassed 36 points to dominate the men's division in the weightlifting category at the Uzani Powerlifting Championships. Joyce Nyagol was the star of the show at the Uzani Weightlifting Championships. Okay, Webster, thank you. You mentioned an issue about uh, Uzani. So I'd like us to talk about, first of all, how the Uzani came about. Then you go to weightlifting. What is weightlifting after Uzani? Uzani started as a group of uh, weightlifters training together uh, with the aspirations of uh, representing Kenya at uh, international uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until 2018 when we ventured into uh, coaching as a business, and that's uh, where we had a new birth of uh, Uzani Weightlifting. As so a, basically it started as a group of athletes, yes. then you are now into coaching as a business. So does it run as a company or an organization? Something it runs like as a private company. As a private company? Yes. Uh, when I check on the Uzani, at least when I check on the Uzani group, eh, mm -hmm. I basically notice that a number of people, like all of you are Olympic weightlifters. Why is it that Uzani? Is it just basically for Olympic weightlifting or you can go beyond, beyond Olympic weightlifting? Because I don't see a powerlifter in Uzani. Yeah. I don't see any cross... <laughs> no, crossfit of course, crossfit and, and Olympic weightlifting go the same. I don't see a strong man in Uzani. Yeah. So the foundation is Olympic weightlifting. That's why majority of the people you're going to see there are uh, Olympic weightlifters. But uh, we also do fitness coaching. So for those who do fitness, we don't really put them on the limelight, but uh, more of uh, in the background. And also, we are yet to find anyone who aspires to venture more into powerlifting or uh, any other uh, discipline that uh, is in line with the, uh, our goals. But uh, basically, for now, we have uh, Olympic lifters are the majority, and we have some powerlifters who are just beginners. Yeah, but for strongman, we have not ventured into that, so we can't have strongman athletes in, uh, in Uzani. So what does it entail to join Uzani? If I want to, me as Maloba to join Uzani, what do I need to do? First of all, you can join as, a, as an athlete or uh, as a coach. Basically, uh, just reach, uh, reach out to us, uh, either, either as an athlete. Some people train just for fun. Some want to, to train and uh, compete at uh, high levels, maybe nationally or internationally as well, those who have those uh, visions and ambitions can also join us. If you are a coach as well and we are in uh, need of one, you can uh, be part of Uzani as well. Okay, now I'd like us to elaborate on something in regards to weightlifting, because I think there's a common myth, people don't really understand what Olympic weightlifting is. When you ask somebody weightlifting, I think they basically think it's the normal weightlifting in the gym. Yeah. Will you please kind of elaborate on weightlifting and what makes, what is the guide for somebody who wants to begin into weightlifting? First of all, I think it's, uh, it has more to do with the, the publicity of weightlifting. Because I don't think uh, the necessary uh, organization has done a better job in that area. And so uh, most people, when you mention weightlifting, their uh, idea that comes into their mind is uh, someone with muscles or someone who is really strong yeah, moving objects. So, and locally, by the way, bodybuilding and strongmen are most popular. Then I think powerlifting is also starting to be popular. To up, yeah. Then Olympic lifting as well. I think Azuzani have done a better job trying to publicize the, uh, to publicize the sport. And uh, basically the difference between those uh, 
three or four disciplines is the style of lifting. We all lift weights, yeah, yes, true. but the style is what makes uh, it different. For Olympic weightlifting, our style is the snatch and the clean and jerk. Yeah. So powerlifting, I'll say, is the style, the squat, bench, deadlift. Strongman is now moving uh, uh, different uh, kind of objects and uh, stuff. So I think that want, uh, that's what makes the difference uh, among us, the disciplines that involve lifting of weights. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think Uzani is the best, I think I can say Uzani is the best program that contains powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, there is bubble fitness. Bubble fitness. Bubble fitness. So what really inspired you to come up with Uzani? Because I, I think I've competed in different capacities as an athlete, eh? but I could say we really enjoy participating in Uzani in terms of the focus, the time, the organization, especially the organization. It's the most organized event. Like you be sure if this thing is supposed to be done this time, it's going to be done this time. What is the inspiration behind Uzan? So thank you for that. I really appreciate that because that's our vision. And uh, what inspired Uzani, the Uzani Power Weekend, that's the event. Uh, for me, my career as, a, as an athlete, uh, I picked a number of lessons from uh, participating in international events. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, the motive behind it is to, to try and bring what I learned outside there to my local people over here. Because looking locally, the way events are organized uh, wasn't so pleasing to me until I was shocked the first time I went to uh, represent Kenya. That was 2014 Commonwealth Games. And I could uh, experience the platform and how everything was uh, conducted. And it really inspired me such that I would admire if anyone could do such an event locally and create such a platform. So that's the all uh, uh, motive behind uh, my working so hard to build a team that will bring that platform, international platform, here locally to the uh, people who just lived for fun. You know. How many events have you done uh, internationally? Because locally, I think I, I think I ever saw you doing strongman at one point, or was it bodybuilding? I did bodybuilding way like uh, 11 years ago. That's yes. where I started. Yeah. yeah, I used to play rugby at KCB before. Then I uh, got introduced into the gym. I did bodybuilding. That was about 2011 there. Mm. And I got introduced into Olympic lifting in 2012. Ever since then, I think I've uh, played uh, Olympic weightlifting the most. But uh, I've participated in uh, some powerlifting events and uh, a CrossFit event. No strongman, not yet. Strongman, not yet. Not yet. Internationally, you did, you went to the... Internationally, I've done Commonwealth Games twice, 2014 and 2018. 2018, yeah. And yeah. I've done uh, a number of African uh, games. I think two African games as well, 2015 and 2019 African games. Then a couple of African uh, championships. So what does it entail if, uh, assuming I'm, a, I'm an Olympic weightlifter and I want to go and compete in the Commonwealth Games, what does it entail? What, what do I need to do? Do I need to perform? Or? Yeah, first of all, you need to train and uh, uh, attend the qualifications in the national team. Uh, and once you're among the best in the national team, that's the place where you can earn your uh, ticket to represent the national team on the outside platform. So basically you go under the Federation of Weightlifting Federation? So you have to go under the Kenya Weightlifting Federation. Is the Federation really active? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say the Federation, uh, the Federation is active, maybe not popular, yeah. but it's active and it's there. Yeah. There is a time way back, uh, you know me, I knew you way back. Sometimes back, I think, there's a time I was watching news, and then I saw you are really complaining that you did not qualify to go to the Olympics, I don't know because of what. What was the issue in relation to the Federation and you not going to the Olympics? Um, I was really, really training hard for the uh, Tokyo Olympic Games, which was a good chance for me because I was at my peak, almost like around my prime. And uh, I was under a scholarship from the National, uh, International Olympic Committee. Of course, it has to be conducted through the national, uh, the local uh, Olympic Committee, which is NOC, and uh, yeah. also in conjunction with the Federation. Yeah, so uh, apparently the scholarship didn't work so well, according to what it was intended to, and that's where my frustrations came in. So I wasn't able to uh, attend the events that I was supposed to. I didn't get the support that the scholarship was supposed to offer me. And uh, and uh, through that, I missed out on Tokyo Olympic Games. You know, way back, there's a time I used to work for a certain 
uh, it was a uh, I think I used to be an intern. I think it was around 2017. And uh, there's a, there's a company called CMB Kenya. I used to be an intern and we officiated the NOC elections. So I, I learned so many things about how this federation works, both good and both negative. So I don't want to go into it eh? yes. because I don't want to be <laughs> somebody to come on my neck and I look forward to going to compete outside the, mm -hmm. one day. So does it really mean that the only way to go and compete outside is through a federation? Yes. Is that not a hindrance to people who are going to who want to come to the Olympics? Because uh, what does it mean to join a federation as an athlete? So, like assuming I'm, yeah. an, I'm, an, uh, I'm a weightlifter, does that automatically mean I'm in a federation or do I have to register? Yeah, so far here in Kenya, some, a lot of things are done more casually than professionally. But uh, everyone, I think almost everyone has a chance to be part of the federation. So first of all, in your own training from wherever you are, you can train. Then you need someone to connect you to the uh, national, uh, uh, a national, the national federation. Mm -hmm. That can be uh, whenever, especially whenever they're doing competitions, for example, mm -hmm. if you find a coach, connect with another coach who is in the national team to mm -hmm. take you to the local events. And uh, once you're able to participate in the national uh, events, mm -hmm. you can be registered uh, with the National Olympic Committee mm -hmm. as an athlete with the federation. Through, I mean, uh, through the federation that is, you're registered. You have to be registered formally as an athlete and put in a database for athletes representing the national team. So it's out of that pool of athletes that. Uh, uh, they have the opportunity to represent the national team in uh, uh, international capacities. That is in any, for example, for weightlifting, it's the international weightlifting uh, federation events. Yeah. yeah. Now, when I check on the previous athletes, is there anybody, because I think the last people I saw going to compete outside was uh, you, there was uh, Winnie, Winnie Langat, mm -hmm. and there was some, I think I've forgotten the name. Yeah. Are there other people who have gone to compete? Beyond, uh, you guys, and that is yes. way back in 20, 20, yes. 2018. 2018, yeah. I think it was the last Commonwealth Games. Yes, we have athletes, yeah, who are still in the national team. Maybe not famous, not popular, but they are athletes. Or maybe, I don't mean to brag, but maybe not as good as we were yeah. then. So uh, they hardly, rather the performance is not very popular. So that's why no one hardly knows about it or about them. The performance is not popular and I think also weightlifting itself as a sport yes. has not been really understood well. Yes. Yeah, because this is in regards to, I was watching a, a, a certain documentary in the US mm -hmm. about, it's actually called the US uh, Olympic weightlifting documentary. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that uh, in the US weightlifting has not been really appreciated as compared to other sports. So I was trying to wonder if the U.S. is advanced and yes. yet weight, Olympic weightlifting is not yeah. appreciated, what about us back in Africa? Yeah. So before I come back to other issues, I'd like to complete on this. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, in regards to what do you think is hindering the sport to growing very well? Weightlifting as a sport, Olympic weightlifting. Olympic weightlifting. To me, it is um, a matter of... Uh, People having the best interests of the sport at heart, such people are hardly to find, rather are hardly there, because uh, no one really takes it uh, that seriously. And uh, if there's someone, uh, for example, in the Federation who really has the interest of the sport at heart, they're going to work extra hard to make it popular, to mobilize. And uh, that's the only way it can grow, by the way, because most responsibility is within the Federation. Outside the Federation, there's hardly anything that anyone can do to make it better other than uh, just popularize the sport through social media and uh, whatever uh, platform uh, as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Web Salukose, uh, the one of the best Olympic weightlifting coaches. Right now, we want to come back to him as a coach and to Uzani as a group. So, Webster, um, I'd like to come back to the Uzani Power Weekends that have been there. There's been power weekend one, I think up to five. Five. Right. So these yeah. power weekends, uh, they started how many years ago? Uh, 2020. 
That is uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Yes. Years and ago. these events have been seeing you. You've been inviting people from Uganda yes. to come and compete. Mm -hmm. And I notice Ugandans are very good in weightlifting. They actually yes. come and beat Kenya. <laughs> Why is it that these guys actually win in Olympic weightlifting? Because me, I, personally, I tend to think Kenyans are more stronger than them. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, they are very strong. I think they are very, very passionate. I think I can just say they are very passionate despite being talented. Yeah. They just ooze passion. More than, uh, for example, the athletes I see around in Kenya. Because to me, we have all it takes even better structures or facility or opportunity. But yeah. uh, anyone locally who has that passion burning for them to be better, they're gonna they're gonna be better by the way. Because I remember to my time as a the national athlete, no one in no one in East Africa would beat me. Yeah. I was the best in East Africa and uh, among the best in Africa. Because I won uh, African uh, silver medal in 2018, 2018 African Championships. I won silver medal. Was uh, uh, so technically I was among the best in Africa. So. If there's anyone else who has that passion burning in them, they're gonna beat. Uh, they're gonna be the best in East Africa. Yeah. yeah. Usually one of the best people in this country, but you're usually yeah. very low key. Why? Why is it that you're so low key? Have you ever tried even to <laughs> even like now in regards to you have yeah. Uzani? Yes. Have you ever tried to seek even can I say outside support like the government support, some other private partnership, or you just do it as a group? Uh, right now, we, we only seek uh, private uh, partnerships, yeah, because uh, it's a it's a private event. It's not a public event, for example, mm -hmm. but a private event. A public event would be an event by the national federation. Yeah. Yeah. Some so of us. So the the, yeah? the 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 government can only support the national federation and not private uh, entities. Uh, so for me, uh, we're only seeking support from private institutions. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us really admire to join Uzani, but it appears like you, you guys are like cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of us are from local gyms. <laughs> if only knew where I was training. Yeah. yeah. The reason why I'm bringing yes. up this issue is, uh, yeah. like, uh, you can't just be, from my own understanding, I, have, I really have interest in joining Olympic weightlifting. Yes. But I'm sure I can't do that because I don't have access to coaching. Yes. And I think also the necessary... Can I say the, the right yes. equipment? Yes. Because like you can't yeah. just do yes. Olympic weightlifting. Yes. You have to have some, can I say some necessary, like what are they called? Shoes, of course, of course, yeah. equipment, the equipment the and the, the equipment and the gears yeah. and coaching. You say coaching uh, facility and the gear. The gear. The gear, that's the shoes, especially the shoes. Yeah. yeah. Then when you came to coaching, Yes. I think when you come to coaching, uh, there are very yes. few Olympic weightlifting coaches. I've never heard of any Olympic weightlifting coach rare. outside Nairobi. Yeah, it's so rare. We have some coaches in the national team. Some athletes are coaches, certified coaches, but uh, I think they're not, uh, they're not interested in furthering their coaching skills. Yeah, that is where I think there is a very big yes. lapse in terms of the yes. sport growing, eh? Exactly. Yeah, because the sports can only grow through coaches and athletes, and uh, the best coaches can, they have to go through uh, being athletes for them to be coaches and stuff. So that's the only, rather the best way, or rather the best people to grow the sport. Yeah, because I think if I try to count on the number of coaches that I know who do Olympic weightlifting, I can barely count five. Yeah. I can barely count five certified Olympic weightlifting coaches in Kenya. Yes. So I think that is, that is a thing that we have to it's check on it as a country. Okay, we well, wanted to ask something in regards to the current events that uh, we had, the Uzani uh, Power Weekend Fiverr. Uh, from my own assessment, I try feel like uh, the event has really grown big eh? and uh, we need to be holding the events in like two days. This also happens to other events that are happening in the country. What's your opinion in regards to that? Uh, based on the analysis of the last event, it only makes sense for us to separate uh, the events, to expand it, because uh, it has expanded. We have a lot of more interested athletes, and uh, it's difficult to accommodate all of them in a single day. So most likely we're going to split it into two different days' event. Okay, and then also uh, the other thing in regards to that is uh, we usually have different events in the country. 
now in this particular case i'm talking about fitness as a general not olympic weightlifting there's olympic weightlifting there is crossfit there yes. is powerlifting strongman i think uh, one thing that i can really accord zani for is like i have seen the coaches that are coaching the events could it be bubble fitness and the other judges are usually olympic weightlifting judges eh? but i think when i try to check on it's a, it's i know it's something that is subject to argument eh? when i check on these other sports some of them we find that i personally feel one reason why the sport is not growing uh, the f- as a whole not particular olympic weightlifting it's because we tend to give the wrong role the wrong people like for instance if me i come up with an event if i come up with an event my event maybe it's called story of a champion i'll make sure at least 90% of the people in that event are either athletes from athletes or coaches but i'm like some of these events you come and see someone is coming to be an mc and he has got completely no idea about olympic weightlifting there is no way you can mc i personally i cannot mc olympic weightlifting despite being an athlete because i barely understand what olympic weightlifting means but i cannot be an mc of powerlifting you see what do you think is your general assessment in regards to that i think it goes back to what i had said earlier Uh, if someone really has the interest of the sport at heart, they're going to work extra to make sure standards are high and competence is high. Because to me, that's lack of competence. Because it only makes sense to, you know, select the best person for the proper role. Yeah, yes. it makes sense. And also it makes, I think it strengthens the bond within the sport. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Now, when you come to back to Uzani, you run Uzani that has got different programs. Yes. But also you as a coach, I usually see you having different workshops. Could you just elaborate for us to know what is Uzani? All right, so for regards to yes. that. Okay. So the main thing first of all the the foundation of Uzani is in weightlifting. But also I'm a fitness coach, certified fitness coach. And uh, for Uzani to rather to exist privately it can only exist so as a business for example because we don't have the support of the government you know so for us to support the course it can only mean uh, we do it as a business so since it's a business we can only get business through for example coaching uh, rather maximizing on all forms of coaching that we can do that's why we have uh, we are doing fitness coaching uh, just be, uh, besides weightlifting coaching and uh, coming into the workshop the main uh, rather workshop that we do is uh, olympic weightlifting why because me personally for my level of uh, practice knowledge and experience that I've garnered over the years it's been just m- more than 10 years into the sport and uh, i really see there's a huge gap that we need to fill by especially educating the public about mm. olympic weightlifting So the workshops is uh, one of the best platforms for anyone who is interested to learn deeper about Olympic weightlifting to attend and uh, uh, increase their knowledge uh, about Olympic weightlifting. So to me it's more of the workshop is more of educational purposes. Uh, so yes. through the through attending the workshops uh, can can I be certified? Uh we'll say uh as a participant you can be certified as a participant but coaching you need to dig deeper into it for example we are helping people to be coaches because there's hardly a platform where you can go and be an olympic weightlifting coach yeah. other than through the national federation yeah so for us we are we want to grow the sport and this is through training people and developing coaches as well So we have a program where we develop coaches. If you want to be a, an Olympic weightlifting coach, for example, first of all, you have to be a certified fitness coach. So what you're coming to do in Olympic weightlifting is to increase your knowledge, especially teaching the barbell movements. Yeah. yeah. So we have a program which is different. For us, a workshop is not enough to make you a coach, but a program, for example, we have like a a 3 or 6 month program to take ah. you through to take you through uh practice of the movements and then uh, through uh, uh, theory 
portion of it as well to understand the mechanics and the um, uh, 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 mechanics, I mean, and uh, uh, how do I put it? Uh, methodology and everything that has uh, to do with the Olympic weightlifting. And that can only take a period of time. Right. And after like, to me, after six months, uh, you should be able to teach at least to beginners. Yeah. And uh, teaching advanced people only takes time. You can't hurry that, but it takes time. Otherwise you're gonna uh, equip you with knowledge and skill and a platform even where you're gonna practice coaching others. I think there's something you forgot even before for, for our viewers, huh? Olympic weightlifting involves how many lifts? Two lifts. Two lifts. Technically, yeah. two lifts. Technically, two lifts. There's a snatch. There are literally three, but technically two lifts. The snatch and the clean and jerk. The clean and jerk. Yeah. Ah. So clean and jerk is two movements, but technically it's combined as one. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So that is a Western course. I'm going to pin his Instagram down there, handle over down there. I'm going to pin the Instagram handle for Uzani, Power Weekend, and Uzani Performance. Anybody who's interested in doing Olympic weightlifting, anybody who's interested to in joining Uzani, Uzani has got different programs. There is powerlifting, there is barbell fitness, and there is, uh, what is the other one? Olympic weightlifting. Olympic weightlifting. Yeah. Now, Webster, back to you as a coach. You as a coach, you as Webster. What don't you know about you as Webster? As a coach, but how do you uh, plan your day before you come to coaching? Is that is that, that sentence making <laughs> making sense? <laughs> let me let me uh, paraphrase the statement. Uh -huh. You are a coach, eh? Yes. How do you program yourself, or how how do you run your activities during the day or the week? I'm. Uh, I think I'm so busy of a person because I have so many roles to play. Mm -hmm. So, for example, power you can use to host it, uh, to host it by annually, mm -hmm. for example. Then uh, yeah. of late, we have been hosting it uh, annually, annually, just yeah. once. Why to give <laughs> me especially time to focus on other things? For example, running Uzani as a business, mm -hmm. it's already a lot of work. Yeah, coaching, again, is a lot of work. So by coaching, I have to do a lot of programming as well, research and analysis. Mm -hmm. And also coaching other coaches, developing other coaches is also another role I play. But I'm also a father and a husband, yeah, a father of two kids and a husband as well. So I have so many roles to play. Technically, my week starts, uh, rather my day starts at four in the morning, yeah. By five, I have my first clients at the gym, coaching them through uh, to till midday. After midday, I go review programs, create new programs, maybe personalize programs according to some people just are just on uh, programming and then uh, do any other activities relating to the business and also relating to the event which is the power weekend so basically my coaching uh, business happens in the morning in afternoons it's more things unrelated uh, not directly related to coaching but other activities to make Uzani as an organization move forward okay I think this interview has not been structured in any way but it's all about Olympic weightlifting and you being one of the best uh, coaches. Eh? So I'd like you to tell our audience anything in regards to the coaching, your personal life, or anything to do with Uzan. <laughs> this is Webster, uh, an Olympic weightlifting coach and athlete. And if you want to reach out to me, if you'd like to learn about Olympic weightlifting, or you'd like to develop yourself as a coach, teaching Olympic weightlifting, you can reach out to me via social media, Uzani Performance whether it's uh, Facebook or Instagram or uh, uh, TikTok, that's how to reach us. And uh, if, you are, uh, if you are an uh, athlete wanting to practice Olympic weightlifting, uh, we have our main location at uh, Ngong Road, that is Alpha Fit. And uh, our second location, which is uh, VMX Fitness at Village Market. And any other place that uh, any of our coaches we have can access, uh, uh, it's dependent on uh, certain factors because we don't own our own facility but conduct our business in other facilities. So for the charges, you have to just take care of the gym charges for the specific area that any of our coaches can come and a little fee for the coach. 
So technically, those who uh, train at Ngong Road, it goes for a fee of uh, 18,500 a month for coaching. Yeah, uh, here at VMX, it's a bit higher. Uh, but uh, any other location where we have uh, an Olympic weightlifting facility, uh, it's uh, dependent on uh, the charges of the facility as well. Uh, besides that, now we are coming to the end of this uh, good interview with uh, Wexner. Do you intend to expand Uzani as a business? And I'm now checking, you know, Uzani at times confuses me a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let me look at it as a sport. Yes. In Uzani there is uh, powerlifting, bubble fitness, and Olympic weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself extending to a point where by then each there's going to be bodybuilding, there's going to be maybe strong one, other fields where you just want to focus on a specific niche and remain there? Uh, Uzani, the main, or rather to be biased, we're going to focus on Olympic weightlifting as the main thing. Other than that, we're going to focus on powerlifting and barbell fitness. Since we don't have expertise in uh, strongman, we can't really uh, go into that direction. But our main focus is going to be in this order, Olympic weightlifting, uh, powerlifting and barbell fitness in this order. Such so that Olympic weightlifting is for those who love Olympic weightlifting. Powerlifting for those again, because they are barbell movements, they relate. But those many people just come to the gym for fun and fitness, we have bubble fitness for them. Yeah. And I think uh, being an athlete, I think we like, and on behalf of a number of other athletes, we like to give credit to Zani. I have interviewed a number of athletes. Eh? You know, people at times don't really understand how sports work, or maybe they, we have got different opinions. But I think one positive feedback that we've gotten is that this is the only sport that tries to balance even in terms of payment in terms of like ladies and both uh, ladies and men are going paid the same amount of money while competing because at the end of the day an athlete is an athlete yes yeah and like you see there's been this discrepancy some people say oh men lift more but i think from my own personal view as an athlete prepping is usually hard for all the all the gender yes. and I think people take credit in Ozani because Ozani pays all of us equally. So we appreciate that because for us first thing I think that makes us stand out, by the way, I'm here to say this, we always have more female athletes than male athletes. Yeah, the only, the only sport that has got more <laughs> female athletes than male athletes. Than male athletes. Yeah. Yeah, then in terms of payment, for example, uh, gifting awards, for example, for us, like uh, everybody puts equal effort for them to win their specific event. And uh, it depends on uh, how we get funding for uh, the winners, for example. Yeah? yeah. So for us, we just distribute it accordingly. Unless, uh, because you don't see a reason to do it differently, unless each athlete was bringing, rather paid according to what they bring. Yeah. But for us, is uh, uh, every athlete comes in the same manner, so also awarding is just in the same manner. Because yeah. everybody has given just equal effort according to their capacity. Okay. I have just remembered something as we come to wind up. Eh? There's usually, uh, so there's a program called Kamkunji, and in Kamkunji, they usually have a very, some very nice plan whereby people can go and compete outside through. Like I've seen some people going to do bodybuilding, strongman through winning in Kamukunji. Yes. Do, does Ozani have such a program in the nearby future? Whereby so, me as a powerlifter, yes. I can go to compete yes. outside, even if it's going to South Africa. Yes. Yeah. So currently we're working uh, towards that so that we can create a platform as well and links to international uh, events whereby the best performers at uh, Power Weekend can uh, have a platform, uh, can have a, an opportunity to go to international platform and uh, put their skill to the test at that level. So yeah. we are working towards that. I think that will be one of the best uh, things that we can do because right now we try to really depend on the government. Yes. We might not really even get to that federation. You right? can wait to the government forever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, website. That's been nice uh, talking to you. Any other Thank thing you. that somebody wants to reach out to you. I'm going to pin the, all the handles. Uzani Performance, there's Uzani Power Weekend, and there's your Instagram handle, which is Webster Lukose. 
then uh, if you, you are comfortable, I'm also going to put your number, being a coach, uh, one of the best coaches that we have, I say in Africa, not even in Kenya. Uh, I think in Kenya is an understatement. Uh, this is the story of a champion. Thank you for your time. Bye.